Hey, welcome to the BG Show. It's your boy BG, and happy Emancipation Day. No, it's something to celebrate, and we're gonna get all into it, but first, I need you to do this. Subscribe to this channel right now. Tap that notification bell, and make sure to follow us on all of our social media, and don't forget to comment below right now. In the meantime, this has been a long time coming. This is actually the first year Canada is finally recognizing emancipation. And it has been such a heavy lift for the community to get us to this point. In fact, we have a special for you because we do have two special guests that are gonna be joining us. Deputy Mayor of Toronto, Michael Thompson, and former MP, Selena Cesar Chavan. They're gonna weigh in on this subject, talk about how significant today is, but also what are the next steps that we need to take as a community. All right, let's get started. Councillor Michael Thompson, welcome to the BG Show. Yeah, Deputy Mayor Thompson. <laughs> you know, listen, I love a title correction. I love a title correction. No, and you know what? And counselor. Yeah, you're both. You're both. And you know what? It is important to say that because I, you know, I know you from, I've been watching your career from when I was young. So I know you from early days as counselor. Now you're deputy mayor. Right. So that should be told. So yes, fact check that. <laughs> well, you, you, are, you are the source of great contents and, and, and clarity in media. So yeah. I love it. I love it. You know, this is a very special episode because we're talking about emancipation. And this year in particular is really special because it's been finally recognized uh, in this country, Emancipation Day. I know you've had a steady hand in this, and this means a lot to you. So I'd love to get your thoughts about Emancipation Day this year. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled, actually. Um, the fact that um, we have finally um, recognized that, you know, Emanci Emancipation Day is an important day in the lives of um, uh, black Canadians and blacks around the world, uh, you know, Canada ended slavery in uh, 1834, but uh, the recognition with respect to emancipation, uh, you know, took a lot longer for an act in Parliament to, to bring about the changes. If you think about the fact that people who were enslaved and they got their freedom and told, now you're free, you're on your own. Yeah. The thing is, in all the work that they had done, free labor to build this society, they were really given nothing. And they weren't, you know, given education. You remember education was not allowed. It was against the law in essence. And uh, they weren't able to own anything. They were owned by people and so on. And you realize we're our starting point. But as a resilient people, we have actually been able to build, not certainly to the degree that we want to or need to, but we're working at it. And so emancipation really helps us to understand and reflect on our history and give us a better understanding in terms of what our future um, will look like. And, and we all have to collectively work together to build a better future. Why do you think it took so long for Canada to recognize this day? Well, I think part of it is that um, there wasn't a lot of effort to really bring it about. And we, we being, there weren't enough Blacks as part of the political leadership voice. It is an, an, an action that needed to be taken to realize what had transpired and to help to free the, the sort of mental um, shacklement and I just thought of that word <laughs> um, for Blacks, quite frankly, because, you know, it's one thing with respect to enslaving the body. It's another thing when you enslave people's minds, because mm -hmm. I think that in, in, in this country and many others, there had been tremendous effort to also enslave our minds. Unless we as Blacks are part of the process of making decisions, our interests are not fully considered. The recognition of emancipation has created a tremendous amount of clarity. Selena Caesar Chavan, welcome back to the BG Show. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? When you bring me back to the show, that's when I know that I didn't mess it up the first time. So I'm feeling good now. I'm feeling good. <laughs> We're going to need to make you a regular. Yeah! 
Yes. <laughs> yes. You need some of this like energy and melanin all yeah. the time. You know what I mean? Yes. No, we love energy here. We live off of the energy. We feed off of the energy. And there's so much energy around Emancipation Day this year because it's the first time this country is actually recognizing the day. I mean, I know this means a lot to you. So, so congratulations are in order. For this day to be recognized, a lot of people have put their, their effort into having a nationally recognized day, mm -hmm. um, Emancipation Day. So we have to put some congratulations in. But this is, this is where I think we sort of fall down a little bit and rest on our laurels thinking that, hmm, because we've accomplished this and because it's taken so long and so much energy and so much effort that we should just celebrate. Mm -hmm. And the challenge with that notion is that once we let up the gas, you know, we were driving along, we're like, oh, let's just take a little break. Once we take that little break, that little break becomes a lot of break. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're in the middle of some big things going on with, with the Black community in this country that need the recognition, that need justice, and that need that development according to the UN Decade of People of African Descent. So until we're all there, nobody is emancipated, nobody is liberated, nobody is free until we all are there, until we all cross that finish line. It was a lift to get you know, the government to recognize Emancipation Day. How much of a lift does it really take? Because I think for the average person, many people don't know. Well, that's, it's years of work. But again, I'm going to emphasize lifting, mm -hmm. it's, it shouldn't just be the whole weight of that shouldn't just be carried by our community. At some point, the government needs to step up and say, no, we're not just going to do performative work, you know, little window dressing here, a couple of dollars there, a couple of dollars here. We're actually going to dismantle the system, look at the root cause of some of these issues and address them head on. You know, you talked about being at the table, the decision making table. You're one of those people that is at the decision-making table when you look at Toronto City Council. But you look at the racial makeup of Toronto City Council, to be honest, it doesn't reflect the actual population racial makeup when you go into the streets. What do we need to do to start to see that proper reflection? There has to be um, more, you know, a concerted efforts to encourage people um, of a broad, a diverse city to be interested in government. I can tell you some of it is the pay that people receive from this business. Some people say I can make more not being involved in government. That's just one aspect. However, there is another conversation that needs to take place. I believe that part of the issue for a lot of people is money getting in and having to, you know, to, to pay to run a campaign and so on. And I do think that as a city, we could actually do a better job in terms of helping people to be able to provide funding so that people have access. Deputy Mayor speaking facts. Listen, it's a good conversation. So make sure to subscribe to this channel, tap that notification bell and follow us on our social media. And don't forget to comment below. Do you agree with that, that more black people need to be at the decision making table? And how can we ensure that more of us get to that point, whether it's in politics or, you know, the head of companies, you name it? So yes, so there needs to be that diversity at the table. But if the power relations do not shift at that table, what's the purpose of just sitting at the table if you're not eating anything, Brandon? Mm. Or what's the purpose of sitting at that table if you're on the menu, Brandon? Mm. So yes, we need more of us at the table so we have each other's back, but there has to be a shift in the culture and the power relations. Selena, Jamaica's made news about the fact that they are preparing to go to Great Britain, to the Queen, and say, run me the check for reparations. Yes. Due to slavery. Yes. Do you agree with this? Do you agree with reparations? Do I agree? <laughs> okay, look at Canada, mm -hmm. look at America, look at these great nations, look at Britain. Look at France, we could talk about Haiti. We look, look at France, mm -hmm. look at all these nations that are our, our G7, our first world. How do you think you made yourself first world? You didn't do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. You did it off of our backs. You did it off of continuing to extract the human and natural resources out of predominantly black countries. 
Selena's coming in hot, but she's not capping. By the way, make sure to comment below. Let us know what you think. Mm. So let's be clear about reparations. You are now redressing an inequity that was caused by you. When we talk about Haiti, when we talk about Jamaica, when we talk about these, these nations that are you know, small island developing states, the only reason we are such is because y'all came in, messed things up, mm -hmm. extracted from us our human and natural resources, left us with nothing, and then said, look at us first world. We're so good. You're not so good because you did it on your own. You're so good because you did it on our backs. Now run me my check. I don't know what's so difficult about that. That's like so easy. That's like the easiest economics class I've ever taught. <laughs> listen, listen. When Miss Selena walks in the room, you better take a seat. Do you believe in reparations? Yeah, that's um, that's a really good question. And I, I would say to you, if, if you spoke to me perhaps, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, I would say, you know, no, look, you know, we have our freedom, let's just move on and so on. But I think when you look at, particularly in this case, the British mercantilism system that was actually put in place, and that was actually, um, you know, really supported by Prime Minister Pitts and uh, uh, people like Henry, Dun and Henry Dundas and so on. Now, what they did was that they used slavery as economic and military uh, benefits to the British system. They would, um, if you will, capture the best in all of these different places, Jamaica and other places, and take it back to the United Kingdom. And they trade, they benefited, they build their cities, they build their homes, they build buildings, they build all manner of economic benefits and so on and gain advantages. And so, you know, 400 years later or 300 years later or 200 year years later, uh, places like Jamaica are saying, oh, by the way, you owe us because you took from us mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. actually trading, without us benefiting. So I do think that, that there is actually a strong argument to be made for that. You know, Deputy Mayor, that word deputy always, you know, puts my eyebrow up because I always wonder, do you want to drop deputy and be Mayor Thompson? <laughs> well, um, you know, look, um, there is... A, a, <laughs> Talk to me nice now. <laughs> and I'm, I'm talking to you nicely as always. There is, uh, there is always, um, you know, an interest in... Uh, moving forward, right? Because it really isn't that what we're talking about. We're talking yeah. about emancipation. We're talking about changes and so on. I would say to you that, um, you know, if the future unfolds in a manner that allows me to be able to have an option and an opportunity to be able to seek higher office, and one is that being the mayor of this great city, uh, I certainly would not shy away from it. It's not something that I'm looking at right at the moment. We have a great mayor now, and Mayor John Tory and so on. And it's really, you know, uh, his decision if he wants to continue to stay on and what have you. And so, but if it was, uh, if there was an opportunity, I, I certainly will tell you that I would not back away from it. So I have to ask you, would you ever go back into politics? Child, um, yes, I would. You know, I, I would, but I, I would go under on my terms. There are certain mm -hmm. things that I will not accept. I will not run under certain leaders that don't have the capacity to lead. Where could you see yourself? Provincial, municipal, federal? I could see myself anywhere. I'm going to say that now because I want to keep people shook. I want to keep people scared. <laughs> oh, Lord, she might show up and run against me. Yeah, you better watch your back. Deputy Mayor Michael Thompson, I truly appreciate the honesty love when we speak things into existence so speak it <laughs> and we will see you soon back on the bg show for sure thank you very much all the best brandon selena caesar chavin thank you again for joining us here on the bg show i i just love brandon you know how much i love you thank you for having me and uh keep doing what you're doing brother we are so so proud of you thank you I'm so glad we could have this conversation. I'm so glad we have this platform where we could have this conversation. And at the end of the day, I just want you all to know this. Emancipation Day, while it is a day, it is something that we, we have to live out. We have to remember, as Deputy Mayor said, that 
removing the chains of physical slavery also means removing the chains of mental slavery. And that's how we begin to progress and move forward as a people. We, together, okay, can create limitless opportunities. Nobody can tell you what you can't do. We need to start telling ourselves what we can do, okay? In the meantime, don't forget, we also have news you can use, which drops every Tuesday and Friday, so go ahead and watch that. And BG Squad, oh my gosh, I almost forgot your guys' name. <laughs> Remember, we drop episodes of the BG Show every Sunday. If you do have any stories or topics you want us to look into, email us, news at brandingonashow.com. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell, follow us on all of our social media, comment below, and share this video. I say it every single week. We love you for watching. Thank you.